the Ted Bundy that we knew was not a murderer. But maybe an hour later, he was. That's the awful part. Though his outward mask still projected charm and sincerity, the killer underneath it was about to be revealed. Bundy would soon be identified when one of his victims escaped. By early November 1974, Ted Bundy had murdered at least 11 women in Washington and Oregon, and two more in Utah, where he was now living. At the same time, he was studying law at Utah University. Probably could have easily become a lawyer if he hadn't been consumed with murder 24 hours a day. The thing is, with serial killers, they are addicted to murder. It's like any other addiction. People may try it first for a high, but you need more and more of the substance, and the substance is murder. But Bundy was about to make his first mistake. On November 8th, posing as an off-duty policeman, he tried to abduct 19-year-old Carol Durange from a shopping center. He told her someone had broken into her car and offered to help. But inside his car, he tried to handcuff her. Carol fought back and with the handcuffs still on her wrists, was able to jump out of the car and escape. Here we have a living victim that's able to describe her abductor, describe the car, and also provide evidence with the handcuff that was still on her wrist. But the police still had no idea who her attacker could be, and Bundy was a master of disguise. He just looked different all the time. One time he'd have a beard, one time he'd have long stringy hair, one time he'd have a short haircut. And I think it varied with, you know, what he was doing at the time. As 1975 began, Bundy widened his neck to include Utah, Idaho, and Colorado. He killed eight women between January and August. But there was no way to connect the murders. Since July of 1974, the Washington police had whittled down their number of suspects named Ted to 200. Bundy remained on their roster, but still, no one suspected the law student at Utah University. The disappearances come closer together, the murders come closer together, the, the orchestration is more finely tuned. But Bundy's luck was about to change. Early on the morning of August 15th, Bundy's car was stopped by a police officer in Utah. Because he had been driving erratically, his car was searched. In the midst of that investigation, the trooper found this bag. And in the bag was a crowbar, handcuffs, ski mask. So he carried his own chamber of horrors around with him. Bundy was immediately arrested on suspicion of burglary. They also found gas receipts and maps that later linked Bundy to the sites of the abductions in Colorado. And more importantly, in a police lineup, Carol Durange identified Bundy as the man who had attacked her. We were shocked. We couldn't believe it. Uh, we tried to raise money for a defense fund for him and, and tried to protect him. We couldn't believe it. They had to have the wrong guy. On February 23rd, 1976, Bundy went on trial for her attempted kidnapping. As the trial began, Bundy sat in the courtroom, totally convinced that he would be found innocent. But on the stand, Carol Durange told of her ordeal at his hands and pointed Bundy out as her assailant. He was found guilty and sentenced to 15 years in prison. While he was incarcerated, investigators linked him to the murder of Karen Campbell in Colorado. But nothing fazed Ted Bundy, even being featured as the lead story on the evening news. Have you ever physically harmed anyone? Ever physically harmed anyone? No. No. You know, uh, again, not in the context, I think, that you, you're speaking of. Ted was, was very self-assured uh, to the point of cockiness. Uh, even, even when the murder charges had been filed. 
In April of 1977, he was transferred to Colorado to await trial. There, Bundy fired his lawyers and was granted permission to defend himself in the upcoming case. Bundy had supreme confidence in his uh, intellect, uh, in his ability to beat the system, to work the system. Even if it meant avoiding trial completely. Two months later, after casing out the court's law library, he jumped out of a two-story window and escaped. Though captured six days later, he wouldn't stay locked up for long. I've matured in the past year. Believe me, I've grown in the past year, and I've learned a lot of things about myself in the past year. My only misgivings is that I might never be, might never be in a position to apply it, you know, on the streets where I'd like to apply it. But soon he would apply it. On New Year's Eve, 1977, Ted Bundy shimmied through an air duct of the Colorado jail and walked to freedom. He went through the top of his cell, down through the jailer's apartment, out into a blizzard. Free once again, Ted Bundy would continue to kill. Ted Bundy had succeeded in a spectacular prison escape and had made his way to Florida. He was now on the FBI's most wanted list, something he must have relished. Loved it, loved it. I always said that infamy became Ted. He changed his name, grew a beard, and spent his time walking the Florida State University campus in Tallahassee. I think it was about January eighth when he rolled into town determined as he said in his confession uh, never to so much as jaywalk but he wouldn't keep that resolution sometime after midnight on january 15 1978 just two weeks after his escape bundy entered the back door of the university's chi omega sorority house as his victims slept, Ted Bundy crept from room to room. He bludgeoned, raped, and killed Lisa Levy and Margaret Bowman. He assaulted and almost killed roommates Karen Chandler and Kathy Kleiner. I think he went in that house to kill every single woman in it. But Bundy wasn't finished. Less than a mile away, he broke into the apartment of Cheryl Thomas. Though he savagely beat her and left her to die, she survived. She was the fifth woman Bundy had attacked that night. It's not something that's causing him guilt because he's free of that. He feels justified and entitled. After what women did to him, why shouldn't he do this to women? Three weeks later, he would kill again. His victim was 12-year-old Kimberly Leach, an attractive and popular junior high school student. Kimberly was kidnapped, brutally assaulted and killed. But Bundy's reign of terror was about to end. On February 15, 1978, a patrolman pulled over a VW bug that had been reported stolen. Ted tried to flee on one in foot. There was a struggle. There was actually a round fired. Uh, and the, the officer was able to bring Ted into custody. Bundy was arrested and identified. Over the following months, investigators in Florida gathered evidence that tied Bundy to Kimberly Leach's murder and the murders and assaults at the sorority house. Though other states sought to extradite Bundy, his first trial would begin in Florida on July 7, 1979. You're gonna represent yourself or you're gonna get another attorney? I'm staying with the man I know best right now and that's me. Bundy acted as his own defense attorney in the Chi Omega murders. He took depositions of witnesses. He filed his own motions, and I responded to those strictly on a professional basis. But at one point, as he questioned an officer about one of the murder scenes, the jurors had a terrifying view of the real Ted Bundy. He walked toward the jury and you could see them kind of lean back in their chairs as he approached them. And he asked a few perfunctory questions of the officer and then asked him to please state with great detail what you saw when you pulled back. 
those sheets. 